this is the face of master artist Higemon, 17th century Austrian master artist. I don't have a lot of his paintings, but these are images that we should be familiar with. All people should be should be familiar with. It's another master artist here. That picture I just showed you is from J. Rogers, Nature No No Color Line. This is here's a highly celebrated portrait entitled Juan de Parja. The 17th century Spanish artist Diego Velasquez is by him. This is painted by Diego Velasquez. In the Spanish language, Parja means partner. So it is possible that Juan was also an artist. Velasquez, who was commissioned to do a portrait of the Roman Catholic Pope, did this portrait of Juan as preparation for the commission. You can find this picture in many books I'm going to show you later on. Here are some other ancient black people that are master artists that I've accumulated over the years. And you're going to see some of their art in this tape. Dionysus, black Russian icons. Andre Rublev, Jean Fouquet, French artist. Arnolfo Di Cambio, Diego Velasquez, Juan de Parja, that we just saw. Hans Memlein, Higemont. Theo Payne's the Greek, Fabulous, the Prophet Luke, or the Apostle Luke from the Bible. Also Mohawk, Indian brother John Fadden, and also Isaiah is not written on this list. These are names that we should be familiar with as master artists. Here's a piece that someone gave me years ago I don't know what the source comes from but it's a picture when you go in John the fifth chapter 1 to 9 it's the time when the waters of Bethesda were troubled and moved by the angel and if you were there and you were in the water you were healed of all ailments Check out this picture. Check out the master art. Here are the Israelite Jews, the Hebrews, with Mary and the baby Jesus in the middle. Here's the pool, and here's all the people coming for healing. Here's the walls of Jerusalem in the background. This is how the lords and the kings and the barons drew the people of the Bible before the Renaissance period when much of the art was Caucasianized, I should say. This is an art piece I did myself. This shows the plight of the black man in America, how it equals and mirrors the passion and the crucifixion of Christ and the crucifixion of the black man in America Galatians 3.13 you can read that Acts 5 and 30 Zechariah 11, 4 and 5 Matthews 10, 6 and 7 as you see the Roman centurion and in the background you have the, three, the two crosses of the other robbers that were hung and crucified along with Christ and 
Mary, the mother of Christ, crying because of the death of her son. And today, you have the Romans, big business, suit and ties, Wall Street, killing us on a multinational level. They ain't got the hoods on no more, but they the same people. A little more advanced, a little more sophisticated, and in the background, you wonder why they used to burn those crosses on black people's lawns when that's supposed to be the symbol of their white Jesus. To me, it's really a mockery of the black Jesus and how they are mocking our true savior, the black Jesus Christ. He's the one who died for our sins and the sins of the world. And here's the black woman crying for the death of a man. Now I want to go back in history around 4th century AD. First I want to, this is, from, this is a book I have where I've gathered many icons from many books that I've gathered throughout the years. I'm going to give you a quick shot of some of these books. I'm going to show, it to them, show them to you later on. All these books I'm going to go through in this tape. Money that I can't get on this tape. As you see, here's Christ and the Twelve Disciples. And the Hebrew Israelite priest here holding a stick of frankincense and myrrh. He was 4th century, during the same time as Constantine, a little bit after, of St. Nicholas, who today America and the world is corrupted to Santa Claus. St. Nicholas. Bought this on the street. He was a black man. And this represents the Indian nations who are also Hebrew. You see the little black sheep, little sheep down here. And the Last Supper of Christ right here which is a Passover supper. Here's some more books over here. I'm going to be going through these books as I go through this tape. But in Rome, you'll find Constantine's the Great. When in Nisi Yugoslavia, you're going to see a woolly head picture of an Israelite Jew that took over the Roman Empire and had whites in slavery or banished to the Caucasus Mountains of South Georgia, Russia, 306 to 307 AD. He did away with the pagan Roman democratic way and established the Bible as law in the known world. Notice the arrow on the arch. There's an arch of Constantine. The area is enlarged to reveal the Negroid Jewish conquerors of the Roman Empire. So you see this is the arch of Constantine. It's in the Rome today. Hopefully it's still there and they haven't disrupted the face of Constantine. I'm going to show you right here. If you see this, where the arrow is at. Now I'm going to go down here to another book and you see this area right here that is enlarged and you'll see Constantine teaching the people. That's what it says. Constantine Relief, Constantine Addresses to People. These are all black people and this was painted back then too. You can't get by this. These are all woolly-haired people. in the face of Constantine. I'm going to show you another book with the same statue so you see this is not nothing I just made up. So now I'm going to go back again so you can see it's another book I got this from. I'll give you that name of that book later on. This area is blown up. This is the Arch of Constantine right here. Okay, now I want to show you this book. This one book that I got this from. 
It's another book. Now this is supposed to be the face of Constantine. Now how does this look like the one I just showed you? Now you look inside the book and you'll find this is a Renaissance picture of Constantine and you'll find a coin here. Doesn't quite look the same. Okay. Now let's turn the page and see this is what is this relief from the arch of Constantine showing people no longer individualized listening to his speech in the form Romanium the relief is over the left hand arch on the north side so you can see here is the arch of Constantine and here is another angle of Constantine the Great. It's another book now. The other source I showed you, I forgot where that book come from, the name of the book, but this book just shows you Constantine the Great, teaching the people. Looks totally different from the picture I showed you before. Kind of looks like Joe Jackson, Michael Jackson's father, a little bit. Get a look at that. We have a great history. We have to show all people the truth. It's going to hurt. It's going to make people mad. But I really, I really don't care. It's time that this stuff comes out. Constantine the Great by Michael Grant. Let's get some more information from this book that I've compiled of images of Constantine. And where he moved to Turkey. This is from J.A. Rogers. This is uh, in Turkey, which used to be called Constantinople. And this is an image right here. Detail of Turkish harem, seen by J.L. Jerome, 1824-1904. This is later Constantinople. This is how we were living. I'm just showing you the picture. Okay. This is from March 2005, U.S. News and World Report, Special Edition, page 43. Turning point, the Council of Nicaea met in 325 A.D. in the Constantine's watchful eye. Look at this icon of how they drew this picture at this time. It's an icon drawn around this time, 5th century, 4th century A.D. Notice Constantine right here, how he's drawn. And that's his mother, Helena. Strong black woman. She went back down to Israel and gathered many holy relics. Took a whole entourage on in an army. And uh, gathered many holy relics of Christ. You know, the spear that stabbed him, the cross, and many other relics she gathered. This is the council. This is how the council was. I'm not even going to say anything. Here's Mary and Christ right here. Some of the priests. Here's Christ, pictures of Christ that they brought with them. Okay. This has to come out. It's time now for this to come out. Here's another forgery. There was many artists especially during the Roman times and up until the Renaissance was a very evil time where they would find black art and desecrate it and they would make other statues. This is a very fresh, this could have been done 100 years ago. And this is the one you see, this is supposed to be Constantine. Don't look nothing like the one I just showed you. That's the lie. This is a Roman warlord and his retainers. Detail from a late 4th century mosaic at Pizza and Marini and Marini and Marina. Got to pronounce that right. And Marina, Sicily. Black people.
This right here. This is Days of Wrath. This is out of a, um, let me say, this is National Geographic, December 1983. Byzantine Empire. Constantine ruled what you call today Turkey. It was called Constantinople. Istanbul means city of Constantinople. This is where Constantine ruled from, ruled the whole Christian world. And this, this is what happened here. They have wrath for Eastern Christians in depicting on Roman, Romanian fresco came on May 29th, 1453, when Constantinople fell after a seven-week siege by Mohammed II. 100,000 Ottoman troops who were white convert Muslim Arabs and real brown-skinned Arabs, they got together. Manned by 8,000 defenders. We only had 8,000 men that were defending Christian, black, Negroes, Israelites. Defenders. The walls proved invincible to the large cannons, largest cannons the world had yet seen until a lightly guarded portal offered a way in. I want you to get a good shot of this. This is the castle of Constantinople in the city of Constantinople in its fall. This is when we begin to lose our power. And you can see the defenders of the city. Picture of Christ, here's the women. The queen, at that time it was Constantine Pelagos, the 11th from Constantine the Great himself that we just saw. Here's some defenders, some um, archers. Afro's really here, brown skin. This is probably Constantine Pelagos right here, the 11th, the last ruler. There was an eight foot Thracian named Hassan who fought on the walls of Fall of Constantinople. Powerful fighter. So, this is the fall of Constantinople right here. Here's some more archers and defenders. As you see, here's the Ottoman Turks. You got some Arab woman now. You see the cathedral there now. I'm going to show you some of that in this in this piece. It's another one. Mysteries of history. Okay. Here we go. Page 74, U.S. News and Special Edition. Okay. And here's one of the saints during Constantine's time. This is on, I'm going to show it to you in color. Right here. You see? Let's get a good look at these people. See, what people understand is that blacks root Europe for a thousand years. They're called the Dark Ages. They don't want you to know this. Blacks in America, there's a media blackout. And blacks should not know their true history. Okay, this is from the... Uh, Public Library picture catalog. This right here, I think, is um, Constantine and Helena, his mother. It's been whitewashed, covered up a little bit. Pain is lost, but you can see the woolly here. You know, these are black people because we just seen the other pictures. You see, there's not long flowing hair. These are woolly haired people. pictures here. Let's go through my archives. I want y'all to see this stuff. Let me read this. Is, this is a page from um, J. Rogers, Nation of North Carolina. Let me see what he says here. Such prejudice, prejudices as existed against race in the matter of marriage were directed chiefly 
against the fair whites to the north because they were considered heathen. Constantine the Great issued strict orders against even the marriage of their princes with his people. Negro soldiers who had been coming into Greece from about the 10th century BC continued to arrive into the War of the Greek Independence in 1830. You can read on down, this gives you a little history of what happened in Turkey from Constantine time up until it was called Turkey when the Ottoman Turks took it over and called it Turkey today. Now it's a Muslim state. Okay. It's a little page here. When Constantine was fighting another black general at the Milvane Bridge in 